All right, pre-calculus students, uh, welcome to lesson three of uh, unit eight, Problems in Motion. Uh, what we're gonna be focusing on in this lesson is uh, modeling with vertical motion. And so what we're focusing on with vertical motion uh, is uh, the idea of uh, modeling the motion of a projectile. Um, and uh, a projectile is going to be something that does not have its own source of power. Uh, and so uh, there might be um, an initial uh, velocity imparted uh, on the object or imparted uh, um, the object itself, if it's maybe a living creature. Um, there's going to be an initial velocity and then uh, an initial height and then forces acting against it to bring it back to the ground. So, so we're really just looking at um, the object moving into the air and then falling back down to earth. Uh, the given formula, the H of T formula, uh, is on the formula sheet or the theorem sheet, and so there's no need to memorize that. We just need to understand the components. And so uh, we have S sub zero. This is our initial height. Uh, H of T is a height function with respect to time, and time is in seconds, uh, and uh, our height is uh, in feet. And so uh, our H of T function in terms of uh, feet with respect to time, uh, and then uh, v sub zero is our initial uh, velocity. Um, velocity, of course, uh, is our rate of change of displacement. Okay, so let's move straight in. What I'm going to do is skip over the first example because all of the conceptual ideas are really dealt with in the second example, and I'm going to try to keep this uh, video as uh, succinct as possible. Okay. And so we have uh, a rocket launched from a roof 20 feet above the ground. And so that is going to be um, our initial height. Uh, it has an initial vertical velocity of 22 feet per second. And that, of course, is our initial vertical velocity. Uh, our equation to model the height of the rocket with respect to time is, of course, h of t uh, equal to minus 16 t squared plus, in this case, our initial velocity, 22 feet per second, uh, multiplied by time, uh, plus uh, 20 uh, to indicate uh, the roof, which is 20 uh, feet above the ground. So there's our function. How much time will elapse before uh, the rocket reaches the ground? And so hopefully what you're looking at when you see this function is that we have got a, a parabola, we've got a quadratic which opens down, uh, and so what we're interested in doing is uh, finding the uh, zeros uh, of this um, function. And so uh, this particular one is a, is a non-calculator. And so we're going to uh, attempt to do this um, by factoring. Uh, or, of course, we could use uh, the quadratic formula. Okay, so uh, first things first, uh, what I'm interested in doing in order to know uh, when the rocket reaches the ground, that's when h of t is equal to zero. Uh, and then what I'm going to do just to make my life a little bit easier is I'm going to divide through um, by my uh, common factor of 2 and specifically I'm going to divide through by minus 2 uh, and so I'm going to get 8t squared plus uh, sorry minus uh, 11t uh, minus 10 okay so I've divided through by um, minus 2 uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, factor that if possible. Okay, and so we want the factors of 10 and the factors of 8, which when um, uh, um, multiplied and added will produce um, minus 11, and so that's going to be uh, 8t and t. Uh, 8 times 2 is going to give us 16, and then... Uh, 5 times 1 is going to give us 5 and 16 to give us our difference of uh, 11. And so we are wanting uh, minus 16 plus 5. Uh, and that will, of course, produce t values of minus 5 over 8 uh, or 2. And, of course, in the context of uh, this problem, minus 5 over 8 would be extraneous. Um, and so we have got... Uh, two seconds elapsing before the rocket uh, reaches the ground. Okay, so 
we're now going to start to talk about uh, velocity. And so uh, if we consider uh, the rate at which the height is changing, uh, or the rate of change of displacement, um, uh, we will be able to determine uh, the object, or in this case, the rocket's velocity. Okay, and so uh, the language is specific. We're using the word velocity as opposed to speed because velocity also has the component of uh, direction. Uh, similarly, we're referring to this as displacement as opposed to distance for the exact same reason. Uh, it allows us to distinguish the, the, the direction in which the object is moving. Okay, and then last but not least, the power rule. Uh, this is the rule that we learned uh, in the unit on uh, limits. And so just a quick reminder, if I had a function f of x equals a x to the power of n, then the power rule is that the first derivative uh, f dash x is equal to n a x to the n minus 1, uh, multiply by the exponent and subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, and then there's a really small extension that we need. Uh, our h of t function here, you can see, consists of the sum or difference of functions. And so there's a very basic extension of the power rule that says um, the derivative of the sum or product of functions, uh, sorry, the derivative of the sum or difference of uh, functions is simply the sum or difference of the derivatives of each of those. And so what that really means is uh, apply the power rule to each of the terms of h of t and then add or subtract them. Okay, and so h prime t, uh, our velo velocity function, which is the rate of change uh, of uh, our displacement, is going to be minus 32t. Uh, and so that has been obtained, of course, by multiplying by 2 and then subtracting the 1, plus 22. And, of course, that's 22 t to the power of 0, which is the numerical value 1, so there's no need to have that in there. And uh, lastly, plus 0, theoretically, because our 20 is 20t 20 to the 0. And so again, no need to write that, but just so that you conceptually understand. So here we have our uh, velocity function. Um, and uh, now we can answer part D, what's the velocity of the rocket after one second? And so what we're effectively doing is h prime 1. We're substituting the numerical value of 1 into our velocity function. So minus 32 times 1 plus 22 leaves us with an answer of minus 10 uh, feet per second. Okay, and let's make sure we uh, remember to include our units. Uh, second part, uh, what is the velocity when it hits the ground? Uh, and of course, we know from the previous question, uh, it's going to hit the ground after two seconds. And so we're now evaluating h prime 2. And so in exactly the same way, I'm just going to substitute in uh, 2. And in this particular case, minus 42 feet per second uh, was the velocity of the rocket when it hit the ground. Okay, and so we'll now just use uh, one further uh, extension, and that is this idea of acceleration, which is the rate of change of the velocity. Uh, and so we're just going to reuse the power rule uh, and a uh, small typo in your note, of course, uh, to find the equation for the acceleration of the rocket, not the armadillo. Um, okay, and so uh, I'm going to go to the h prime t function. And so what I'm effectively doing is... Uh, I am finding, uh, in order to find the acceleration function, uh, is simply going to be uh, the derivative of the uh, velocity function. And so uh, in this particular case, uh, that is es essentially the second derivative uh, of your um, uh, original height function. Okay, and so uh, I'm going to, uh, same thing over here, uh, use the power rule, multiply by the exponent, subtract 1, and what we're going to end up with is um, the first derivative of the velocity function, which is just minus 32. Uh, part f, y is acceleration uh, constant, uh, and the answer is, of course, the derivative uh, of a linear function produces a constant because the slope is the same, but in this case, 
uh, it is constant because the, vertic the vertical acceleration uh, is being caused by gravity and gravity is of course uh, constant. And so uh, that is our answer to part F. Gravity is of course constant and gravity is uh, minus 32 feet per second squared. Uh, or, of course, the uh, metric equivalent, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, uh, so that example really highlights all the, the major conceptual ideas. Uh, and so for the next couple of examples, I'm just going to focus on uh, the initial setup, and I'm not going to work it all the way through. I would encourage you to do so, and then to check <clears throat> uh, your answers afterwards but i'm just going to focus on uh, the main setup and what our approach should be okay uh, and again just a small clarification in example three uh, we've got a football which is thrown upwards of course uh, throwing the football upwards is going to be a positive initial velocity whereas if i were to be standing on the cliff and throw that football down then i'm imparting a negative initial velocity because it's heading towards uh, the ground. Okay, so I'm going to write my equation in this case. Again, we are just using the h of t function, and so h of t minus 16t squared uh, plus, in this case, my uh, initial velocity 48 feet per second, and so that's going to be 48 uh, t, vo times t, uh, plus so, which is our initial height in feet, and our cliff 250 feet high. So that's going to be um, our um, height function. Uh, next thing, algebraically, and so actually these first examples are all kind of non-calc because the functions are going to be factorable. Uh, if that weren't the case, of course, this will appear on the non-calc portion of your assessments. So if we want the maximum height of the ball, of course, what we're after is the vertex of our parabola or quadratic function. Um, Several different ways of doing that. Of course, we could factor, find the zeros, and find the average. Uh, you could also use minus b uh, over 2a. And finally, you could uh, complete the square, uh, all of which would uh, yield uh, what we need. And so uh, which approach you use is a question of efficiency and what else uh, we need um, in the equation. So if we just cast our eyes down, uh, we're being asked when the, when the ball is at its maximum, which is effectively the x-coordinate of the turning point or maximum. Um, and so it would seem that what we're interested in doing here is a couple of different things, maybe minus b over 2a, which is going to yield the answer to c, uh, and then substitute that in uh, in order to uh, yield the answer uh, for uh, the maximum height of the ball, the maximum of uh, the function. And so I'm going to do it that way. I, you'll see on the answer key that uh, it's been done by completing the square, which is, of course, uh, another option. And if we needed a graph, then, of course, that would be uh, a valuable way uh, to do that. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do here, uh, so vertex minus b over 2a, which in the context of this is going to be minus 48 over 2 times minus 16. Uh, and that's going to uh, yield uh, a value after simplifying. So we have minus 48 over minus 32, which both are divisible by 16, and we're going to get 3 over 2, or uh, the answer to part C, which is when is the ball at its maximum height uh, at t equals 1.5 uh, seconds. Um, and then if I go back, if I actually want the maximum height of the ball, then I'm interested in h of... 3 over 2, and so minus 16 times 3 over 2 squared plus 48 times 3 over 2 plus 250. Uh, and again, in the interest of time, uh, we'll just go straight here to the answer. You could have, uh, uh, and so we're going to get an answer of 286 feet. Uh, and so if we now move to uh, part D, write uh, an equation to model the velocity of the ball. And so our velocity function is going to be the first derivative of our height function, uh, as we did in the previous example. And so we'll use our power rule, uh, 
multiply by the exponent and subtract 1, so minus 32t to the power of 1 plus 48 uh, and plus 0, of course. So there's our velocity function. Uh, find the velocity of the ball after one second and after two seconds. And so uh, nothing particularly uh, special about this example in terms of method. It's fairly uh, obvious. What we're going to do is uh, substitute v of 1 and substitute v of 2. Um, but uh, there is uh, something noteworthy in our answers. And so here we're going to get minus 32 times 1 plus 48, which is going to yield 16 feet per second. Again, you must remember to include your units because we're dealing with velocity. Uh, and so minus 32 times 2 plus 48. And in this case, uh, we get our answer of minus 16 feet uh, per second. And so the, uh, the key thing here is to realize that at time one, after one second, uh, the uh, football is on its way up. And uh, at time two seconds, the football is on its way down. And the positive and the negative velocities uh, tell us the direction uh, of course, we also can ascertain from our vertex or turning point that the ball has peaked at one point after 1.5 seconds. And so this obviously allows us uh, to extrapolate out this information as well. Okay, uh, and then um, we should be able to answer uh, F without uh, doing a substitution. Of course, you could do a substitution if you wish. Um, the velocity of the ball after 1.5 seconds and so that is the moment at which the ball has peaked and so we're expecting that velocity uh, to be zero the moment the, the ball uh, the instantaneous rate of change of the ball at that time is in fact a zero as it changes direction from up to down uh, and so uh, we could just show that with a substitution v of 1.5 um, oops sorry I asked just saw a top over there, uh, minus 32 multiplied by 3 over 2 uh, plus 48. And of course, uh, that is going to produce a velocity of 0 feet per second. Uh, and so that occurs uh, at the maximum uh, when the ball is about to change direction. Okay, and then lastly, what is the acceleration uh, of the ball, which uh, is going to be uh, the same as our rocket uh, the acceleration uh, function is going to be the derivative of the velocity function. Um, and so, uh, once again, this uh, will yield a constant. Uh, minus 32 uh, uh, feet per second squared. Okay. Uh, and to the last example, this one uh, allows the use of calculators uh, and... Really, again, what I want to focus on here is just talking about uh, the setup. Uh, and so now we have uh, you and a friend uh, on the top of a 15-story uh, building with some water balloons. Uh, the ground is 200 feet below. So that is going to be uh, our initial height for both of you. Uh, you drop your balloon uh, and your friend throws his balloon down at 40 feet per second. And so... Uh, your initial uh, velocity is going to be zero, whereas your friend's initial velocity is going to be 40 feet per second. But keep in mind that's going to need to be a negative because they are throwing the balloon downwards as opposed to up. And so I'll just write the functions and then pretty much the rest of the problem is uh, standard. And so uh, H1t, which is uh, your uh, height function, is uh, going to be uh, minus 16 t squared plus 200. We have no initial velocity, uh, and your friend's um, height function will be modeled by minus 16 t squared minus 40 t plus 200. And of course, the key difference is the fact that your friend throws his balloon downwards uh, at an initial velocity of 40 feet per second. Okay. Uh, and then just uh, I'll talk through the basic ideas. By how many seconds does his balloon beat yours to the ground? 
and so what we're interested in solving is h1 of t equal to 0, h2 of t equal to 0, and then we'll take the difference of those two answers, uh, and what was the velocity of each balloon when it hit the ground, of course, that is just uh, a substitution of the values we obtained for b uh, into uh, our velocity function, and so we would first find our the, uh, derivatives of the height functions uh, and then substitute in the answers from B into each uh, 